Let's go to uh, Harry Saverina, what she makes of this, the Judicial Crisis Network president, former clerk for Justice Thomas. Harry, very good to have you. No surprises here. I guess the maybe the weird thing, given the parameters and Justice Breyer wanting to complete this term. Um, what do you think of that? Well, you know, a lot of people wondered whether he even intended to retire quite when he did. Recall his retirement announcement was leaked by the White House That's right. before he actually intended to give it. So we don't really, we don't think we'll ever really know, did he really intend to retire in a much more traditional fashion toward the end of the term, um, effective at the end of the term, or did he really mean for this process to happen so much earlier? Uh, whatever the case may be, uh, at this point we have Judge Jackson who, uh, per the tradition on the D.C. Circuit, probably will not be taking any more cases there, um, and now is just sort of waiting uh, to take her seat in June after, at the very end of June, in fact, probably more like July, after Justice Breyer completes this term of the Supreme Court. What did you think of the three Republicans who did vote for her, Carrie? I mean, making it, it was still close, a 53-47 vote. Yeah, I mean, actually, 53-47, well, you know, compared to someone like Justice Barrett, who had, a, who had every single Democrat vote against her, uh, despite her outstanding qualifications, you know, that's actually a, the, the lowest vote that any uh, Democrat in, in recent history, uh, almost, almost in all of history probably, has had that hmm. got confirmed. You think of Justices uh, Kagan and Sotomayor had 63 and 67 votes. Um, so I think that reflects the fact that Republicans have come around to the idea that Democrats have known for now several decades, which is uh, that they, they don't have to just vote for every single nominee that comes along, that actually the judicial philosophy of the nominee does matter. And for most of the, of the Republican GOP members, uh, her uh, claiming not to have a philosophy at all, the real concerns about her sentencing practices, um, et cetera, were enough to make to raise real concerns about uh, about her candidacy for the Supreme Court. At the end of the day, though, because there are 50 Democrats and Vice President Harris as the tie vote uh, breaker, uh, she was going to be confirmed. And uh, that's just a reflection of the reality of where we are right now with a 50-50 Senate. Yeah, and it could be a different Senate after that, after the midterms, we'll see. But I, I did yeah. want to get your thoughts a little bit on how this all went through, largely um, without any of the controversy or heat we've seen in prior uh, nominations. Uh, and maybe that's because it would not, you know, tilt the balance of the court one, one way or another. Someone viewed as a liberal replacing someone viewed as a liberal. But the next, the next uh, you know, nomination could be a little bit thornier, huh? Oh, well, a lot of what has to go into the, whether it's thorny or not um, has to do with uh, the fact that, you know, it's, it's practically speaking, she didn't answer a lot of questions thoroughly. She said she didn't know about a lot of things. She just simply didn't want to go on the record saying things. And oh, she was kind of largely given a pass by that. She, I think she was, that was a calculation um, and that she knew she could kind of say, oh, I don't have a judicial philosophy and it's, give kind of vague answers to things and that she would still get those votes because the Democrats were basically guaranteed to vote for anyone that, that Joe Biden nominated. Um, she has major support be, from the, the, the big uh, heavy hitter dark money groups on the left that have funded, uh, you know, upwards of a billion dollars for Democrat campaigns. They're going to support the nominee put forward by this group. Uh, so I, I think that that's a large factor in why she didn't have to worry. So the next nominee may have some of those same uh, same things going for them. In point of fact, the ones who get the really difficult nomination processes, unfortunately, are always the Republican nominees. You think of the Clarence Thomases of the world, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, or even, as I said, you know, Amy Coney Barrett, outstanding nominee, and still couldn't even uh, get a single Democrat to vote for her. Justice Gorsuch, who they tried to filibuster. Justice Alito, also they tried to filibuster. So uh, historically, Democrats have just been very brass knuckles in these nomination battles. And I'm, I'm glad to say that we had serious Serious questions, serious questions about her judicial philosophy that at least the Republicans took seriously, if not the Democrats and most of the mainstream media. All right, Gary, uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, uh, Gary Severino, the Judicial Crisis Network president. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.